In the 1910s and 20s, the nation was on the grow. Limestone was in high demand. In 1904, the Missouri Bureau of Geology and Mines called Phoenix the largest and best equipped quarry in the state. It was also one of the largest producers in the entire western U.S. The rock was used locally to build things like the Greene County Courthouse. If you go around Springfield, just about every building that was built before 1940 has Phoenix stone somewhere in it. Also, the Missouri State Capitol in Jefferson City. The stone from Phoenix in our state capitol is on the legislative floor. And one of the sad things about that is if you research that, uh, Phoenix has really never been given credit for that stone. So, you know, it, it's like uh, somebody needs to give it credit, I think. Phoenix Stone was also used in several buildings in Kansas City, like the City Hall, Federal Reserve, and Nelson Art Gallery. Uh, and on most of the buildings were monumental buildings. They were courthouses, hospitals, fame, uh, big, big churches. None of them were small. All of them were monumental buildings that you would, you know, when you would go up to it, you would go, wow, you know, this is such a big building. Day in and out, trains full of freshly cut stone chugged out of town, bound for America's big cities under construction. San Francisco's Russ Building took several dozen rail cars of Phoenix stone, as did the high rise for Standard Oil. And one of the most fascinating buildings, I think, is one in San Francisco, and it's called the Palace of the Legion of Honor. Right now, it's, a, it's still there, and it's used as an art gallery. And beautiful, beautiful work. Most of the Phoenix stone is on the interior. Other lasting legacies of Phoenix include Chicago's Cook County Courthouse and the Red Cross headquarters in Washington, D.C. Then there's the New York Stock Exchange. Also in New York City, the skyscrapers, known as the American Radiator Building and Standard Oil Building. There were, there were over 15 buildings in New York. In Los Angeles, there's the Southern California Edison Building and the iconic City Hall. Los Angeles City Hall has been used in numerous uh, movies. So, so many times we see those things that hold a part of us. Down in the Ozark Mountains of Missouri at Phoenix, far off the beaten paths of travel and until the advent of the radio and the motor car, a rather dismal place that gave comic strip artists ample opportunity to create hillbilly folk characters is fast becoming a community of importance. Stone Magazine, 1926. You know, this was our area. This was just a little rural area, this little town, and people worked so hard and they made such an impact on the buildings across America. That's what I think is important. I just think the legacy of this place will never die as long as those buildings live. It makes me think a lot of people who put up those buildings knew what they were doing. <laughs> there are some of those buildings you couldn't blast them down, I don't guess, you know, they're put up so good. The future was looking bright. In 1922, the company built its brand new powerhouse, which provided electricity to both Phoenix and Walnut Grove. It was, they had a generator, a giant generator in there, and at the side of the building, you'll see a bunch of chutes open the wooden louvers that open up. And the train would pull up, dump the coal in there. That guy had to shovel it off with a shovel, and I can't imagine that. He'd throw the coal in, and then they had to scoop it into the boiler. And I remember the big old uh, wheel, the flywheel kept running. And the, the channel that you see there, that was the flue, and that had a big pipe coming up the top. And it would be billowing in the smoke, and then that, that iron contraption you see over there is where the, the wires went, and that was the relay. Everything looked good but the Roaring Twenties were about to come crashing down. October 1929, from the very New York Stock Exchange halls constructed of Phoenix marble, came word the stock market had crashed. The Great Depression began. And it was rough. People don't realize how bad it was. And it was terrible. I don't want to see anybody go through what we went through. The crippling economic effects hit hard across the nation. 
all the way back to Phoenix. We never went hungry. And that, that's the worst, you know, never got cold. And, but we didn't have anything. This time there, we didn't even have a car. And you just uh, survived, that's all. They, people, uh, they kind of got used to it, living through the Depression. The 1930s marked the beginning of the end for Phoenix. With the Great Depression going on, there was not a lot of construction taking place across the nation, let alone a fancy buildings made of marble like you'd find here at Phoenix. And just like the nation's economic progress, operations here at the quarry came to a grinding halt. Prior to the heyday of, of Phoenix, um, if you wanted an impressive building and you wanted to, to have something that was uh, structurally sound, you used real stone. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, the, the advent of, of reinforced concrete came out, and that allowed architects to come up with plans for their clients that would be a fraction of the cost with the same strength and durability as, as real stone. It wasn't, they wouldn't work. It's the fact that they, they, there was no work. It, it didn't gradually go down. It just shut down overnight when it Closed down is a sad time because no one knew what to do. They'd worked their whole life. Their children all started to work there. And they all had to find new jobs. And then when I went back to service, it was gone. And when I come home, they had to shut it down. Everybody was leaving, you know. It just, just like a ghost town there in no time at all. They just, a lot of my folks went to uh, Took off, went to California with old cars, and some of them made it through, and some didn't, had to stop on the way. And Families held on as long as they could. My mother was a school teacher, and the first year she went to California, she made more money in that first year than she made out back here all together. As the Depression drug on, the last signs of a town, a people called Phoenix, faded away. As I gaze upon the side of this place after an absence of many years, I find time had not stood still. These once proud structures made of stone now stand like skeletons, shorn of all their dignity. The painless windows stare with unseeing eyes. This little town that holds so many memories for so many people, the joys, the sorrows, happiness and despair, all the emotions of a lifetime. The town had sickened and died. Filled with Firestone. But World War II, uh, they came in and they scrapped everything out. And I came back and I went back to Phoenix. I couldn't find one spike, railroad spike. They took all the metal, just all of it. And the train tracks to Phoenix, the very first thing here, were one of the last to go. Phoenix is a, has a special history. I mean, that town grew for a special purpose. I think the history of any place is important. You never really want to let the history die. It is so much to tell about Phoenix that you just can't, can't describe it. There's so many things I wish I'd have watched but closer. You grew up with it. You did, uh, now I look back and I think, well, why didn't I do this and why did I do that? But it's too late. When I was born in 1948, it was, um, they said I was born in Walnut Grove, but it was a quarter, maybe a quarter of a mile from Phoenix. Well, whenever I was a freshman, we had to write an essay in school, and so um, I decided to write about Phoenix because that was a big part of my life, you know, where I lived and my grandparents and my dad and everyone. So. I interviewed a bunch of different people in town, my dad very extensively, and um, they told me how the, the mechanics worked at the quarry, how they did all of the um, mechanical part of it and, and all about all of the stores and the, the churches and every, the keel hall and everything. Well, actually, um, I didn't know that it had been saved. Um, whenever my mom and dad died and we were going through their, their papers and everything, my mom had saved that article in some of their papers. And uh, 
it was it really brought back a lot of memories to me to see the paper but actually read it it was really interesting to read it like probably 50 some years ago you know I wrote it so it was it was really interesting to see that paper and to read about it and it brought back a lot more interest for me then too.